Good morning to you. Coming up, new information this morning from a police officer with a stabbing near the Gallatin Valley Mall that happened last night, leaving a man severely injured. Also new for you this morning, a new poll showing how people say they might vote in Montana's races for governor and U.S. representative. We have more about that in just a moment. Right now, good morning to you. Welcome to your Thursday coming right up on 630. I'm Missy O'Malley. Chet Lehman has our weather forecast for you today. Matt Elwell is off. And our top story for you now, as we mentioned just a moment ago, police tell MTN News this morning that a man who was stabbed after an altercation near the Petco store by the Gallatin Valley Mall last night remains in stable condition this morning. Now, last night, police reported that the victim received serious injuries and was taken to the hospital. Police received a call at about 6 o'clock last night for reports of a fight near the mall. According to Bozeman Police, the male suspect stabbed another man near the Petco parking lot and then ran into the mall. Police searched for him for close to two hours. Police safely escorted people out of the mall, but asked residents to stay clear of the area last night. We would ask that the general public stay away from the mall for the evening uh, if, if they don't have some type of an emergency to come down here. Uh, and that is for their own safety, but it's also for uh, to not complicate the, the issues down here while we uh, look for a suspect and process a crime scene and conduct an investigation. Now, shortly before 10 o'clock last night, police finished searching a grassy area near the stabbing scene and removed police tape from the area. Police tell us this morning that several witnesses continued to be interviewed by detectives, but note that no arrests have been made. Officers are still looking for the man who left the scene shortly after the stabbing. Police tell us that the mall is expected to open as usual for business this morning, and we are expected to hear more from police in the next few hours, and we'll bring you that update online right here, KBZK and KXLF.com. Absolutely. And Cody Boyer and Gabby Krevit were on the scene last night doing fantastic a great job. Online, coverage. on air, getting all the accurate information and doing everything the right way. That's, That's just right. fantastic. Shout out to our uh, our coworkers out there. That's right. Best of the best. The best of the best. Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, coming up in the next couple of days what we uh, refer to officially as a double Y forecast. <laughs> Yay! Yuck! Oh. Yay! <laughs> yuck! It's a double Y forecast, people. Here's the yuck. I'm going to give you the yuck. Winter storm watch in effect for Saturday uh, for that uh, blue shaded area there as well. We have a wind advisory starting tonight running until Friday. We also have a high wind watch for a big chunk of our viewing area starting at noon on Friday until midnight on Saturday. And a high wind warning for a big chunk of uh, central and northern Montana starting at 9 o'clock on Friday morning running until midnight. That's the yuck. A little yucky right now. The temperature's in the 20s out there right now. Seven in West Yellowstone. Temperature's falling a couple of degrees as we get closer to sunset. The yay part of our forecast, Missy, in 10 minutes. Now, I thought the double Y was why, why? That's, I thought it was something along w. those lines. <laughs> Explain some of your reading. I got Why, <laughs> why? Okay. In other news for you this morning, a new poll reveals that some interesting results about the upcoming 2020 primary races for the Montana governor, the U.S. House, and the U.S. Senate. Also, the popularity of President Trump in this part of the country. MTN's Mitch Laggy brings us those results. The race for Montana governor and Montana's U.S. House seat are still wide open, according to a new MSUB Mountain States poll. Let's take a look at some of the results. In the race for Montana governor, it's still wide open. Of the Republican Montanans, when asked who they would vote for today, 33% chose Greg Gianforte, 25% chose Montana Attorney General Tim Fox, 9% for Montana legislator Al Oshevsky, and 32% were undecided. That theme of indecision is running through to the U.S. House race as well. Of Montana Republicans, 44% don't know who to pick followed by Montana Insurance Commissioner Matt Rosendale at 32%, and Montana Secretary of State Corey Stapleton pulling at 22%. And on the Democratic side of things, Bozeman legislator Kathleen Williams pulling strongly at 69%, 25% were undecided, and 6% would vote for Sims rancher Matt Raines. And in Montana, the poll for Senate only looked at the Democratic side of the coin, asking people if they would vote for Governor Steve Bullock for Senate. 59% of Democrats said they would, but Bullock is running for president and has repeatedly said he has no interest in the Senate seat. The poll did look at how much Montanans approved of Senator Steve Daines. 49% approved of Daines, 35% were undecided, and 16% also voiced their disapproval. The poll also asked people's opinion of President Donald Trump. Montana and Wyoming voters generally approve of Trump's performance, with 54% approval in Montana and 75% approval in Wyoming. And the question of impeachment, 
59% of Montana voters disapprove, while 8% are undecided. And over in Wyoming, 77% of voters disapprove of impeaching the president, while 2% are undecided. MSUB assistant political science professor Dr. Jason Adkins organized the poll and said many folks are still undecided across the board because the primary election in Montana is still about eight months away. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Now the results from that poll have a plus or minus of around 7%, which is fairly high. Voters were asked those questions between October 7th and October 16th. And Butte police officers and firefighters are getting a much needed upgrade in their communication system. The city has approved $1.6 million to supply police and fire personnel with the new 800 megahertz radio system. This will replace the current radio system for police and fire, which has shown to receive interference and sometimes fails to work when they use them in buildings. Operating inside, you know, interior firefighting operations are probably the most dangerous place you're going to send personnel. So you've got to have good communications, and we currently don't have good communications. And so that's, that's the whole thrust behind getting this. And same for law enforcement. They have the same issues. Now, the new radio system will be in place before the end of the year. That is some great news. And the Human Resource Development Council, HRDC, plans to turn a home in the Bozeman neighborhood into a temporary overflow location for the warming center. MTN's Gabby Krevet has more on how neighbors are responding. Some people in the Figgins neighborhood in South Bozeman say the possibility of a temporary warming center in the neighborhood is a bad idea. We care deeply about those in need. This is just about the location. It's just simply a bad location. The HRDC says they're at capacity at their seasonal emergency shelter on Industrial Drive and plan on opening an overflow location that can house up to 36 people. Being able to shelter the women and family that are seeking shelter in this community, I mean, they are... They are our neighbors. They're not people that are just coming in. They're our neighbors that are in, in this housing crisis. One big concern is um, the proximity to the elementary school and middle school and just the concern of what if, a what if scenario. Neighbors say they're concerned about people with a history of violence and drug use traveling through the neighborhood, especially a neighborhood with lots of families and children. The HRDC says concerns are legitimate, but unlikely. The HRDC met with neighbors in close proximity of the future site earlier this month, but some neighbors reported there was not a strong line of communication between the HRDC and the neighborhood at large. The HRDC has already purchased the home that would serve as the warming center's temporary overflow location. They're still actively looking for other locations that would make a better fit. And even if they were to move forward with the current location and its plans, they still need to get approved by the city. We know it's not an ideal location. We still are looking and we don't want it there. Some in the neighborhood and many in the community have voiced their strong support for the possible warming center. In Bozeman, Gabby Krevit, MTN News. Now, the HRDC does plan on opening a new permanent location off of Griffin Drive in the future. The warming center on Industrial Drive is open between November and March. And the community is still shaken after the loss of Gallatin County Sheriff's Deputy Jake Almendinger from this past weekend. And now those who worked alongside him are preparing to lay him to rest. Sheriff Brian Goodkin, along with Captain Don Peterson, announced the procession will take Almendinger through downtown Bozeman starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow, Friday morning. Now, right now, about 150 units from 50 agencies in four different states will be making that procession. The sheriff says this number will likely double by tomorrow, making the line more than several miles long. The funeral will take place immediately following the procession at Journey Church near Baxter and Love Lane. We are going to take care of that family and we're going to make sure that they, uh, you know, next week everyone else moves on and that family has a long road ahead of them. But seeing the emotion that the public comes out that actually gives us support. Um, it's huge. Now the funeral will once again take place at Journey Church starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. You can find out more information and a detailed look at the processional map on our websites, of course. And Colorado's Attorney General released an explosive report on sexual assaults within the Catholic Church. The church reviewed records from the past 70 years for the three biggest dioceses and found 166 cases of child sexual abuse. 90 of those were victims abused by three priests alone. The report also found that half of all victims were abused by priests after the church had been warned about them. 
A spokesperson for the Denver Archdiocese said that the church has taken huge steps to address the issue and made reporting easier. So glad to have you with us here on this Thursday morning. It is 640. It's time for a quick break. Let's take a look ahead on Montana this morning as well as what's coming up at Good CBS this morning.